don't make us who we are So I'll dream until I make it real And all I see is Here we are again I feel like I feel like I need to have like this big announcement So okay let me start this again Welcome everybody <laughs> to another awesome episode with um Marin and Michelle and we are I, I keep saying manifesting Mondays mentorship Mondays <laughs> but it really is manifestation because all these things are happening all these like really cool things are happening every week and I'm so excited because Marin you're teaching me so much because as you talk about different experiences that you're having and um these little ideas and I was just telling you before we started recording um just something else again about the ghost radar box because I know so many people are having fun with it and I have even more fun with it than I've ever done so anyway but uh so how are you it's labor day today and um for us our kids go back to school I thought here in Ontario they went back to school tomorrow because it's always been the day after labor day our kids started school but tomorrow's a PD day it's a professional oh. development day. The kids don't go back till Wednesday. And I just oh found goodness. that out this morning. And I'm like, since when does the PD day come after right. Labor Day weekend? But anyway, so how was your weekend? Has it been good? It's been really good. We had family in town and got to spend lots of time with our family, which was so wonderful. So um, kind of recovering today. Yeah, yeah, a day. And, you, and your kids are already in school. Nope, we have a uh, Labor Day off as well. All right. Oh, but yeah, they've oh, gone yeah, back for the year. But they've gone back for the year, yeah. Yeah, but they are off. So like, yeah, I'm so worried they're gonna just bust in my office any minute here. So. Well, I guess if they if they do, they do. It was meant yeah. to be. <laughs> That's right. So, um, the mayor and I were talking, and I mean, there's so many good things. Like you guys are leaving some really awesome comments. And um, thank you for that and for sharing your stories and your thoughts and your experiences and your questions, of course, too. Um, there's one that we're going to focus on that, that we got uh, a little while ago, and it was on blockages and understanding how do we clear blockages. Well, first of all, what are they? You know, what are blockages and you know, how do we identify them? what do we do about them and um once we clear them do they come back do we have to deal with them over and over again how do we get rid you of scared them? me and like do they come back oh please no no well it, and okay so let's start what's a blockage okay what's a blockage so uh, a blockage for <gasps> me what was that that's my dog oh it's <laughs> There's kids ringing the doorbell and he hears the doorbell and he's like, has made every uh, video so far and it's never made a sound. And now all of a sudden. I just, I want to laugh so hard. I thought that was oh, you. God. I'm like, I'm like <laughs> what? What happened? Because <laughs> I wasn't looking track. Okay. Oh, okay it's all good. It's I all knew good. the kids. See, it's I manifested good. that. Yeah, I said, I called it. Okay, okay sorry. Okay. I'm going to see if I lay back down because otherwise yeah. I'll just scratch yeah, on my I'm door and cry down trying down to get back in. Yeah. Um, okay, so so what's a blockage? Well, a blockage, um, my perception and what I've been taught is a blockage is something that is what's well, energy. So a blockage is a, a belief um, or a sometimes the uh, energy that we collect from an experience. It can be in our emotions. Um, it's something that we hold and, and most people will hear it in our spiritual community. Um, or a holistic community as an energy that's being held within the chakra. And so our chakras are related to our energy body and our emotions, our um, sometimes um, uh, mental state, um, which then turn into blockages within the physical body. So if we have a blockage from something that we've experienced, so for ex example, let's say um, I was stabbed in the throat in some other lifetime um we'll say like back in the 1400s i was riding a horse and i was stabbed in the throat and in this lifetime i may have challenges 
connected to that experience with expressing myself in the throat chakra. So some of that imprint I carried forward into this lifetime. Well, in this lifetime, something that I would then notice would be um, I might have difficulty speaking up. I might get really nervous when I have to talk about something um, or something that makes me scared might close up my throat chakra. So that's one way a blockage can be experienced. It's coming from another lifetime where we could say, I don't know what it is in this lifetime. I never had anything. I never had anything that went on that would make me feel that way. Now we can also have that coupled with an experience. So for example, we could have, um, I have that experience in the past lifetime. And then in this lifetime, let's say I was in grade school and I spoke up and said something in front of a group of kids or in front of a class and they laughed at me and it completely shut me down. And from that point on, I had difficulty expressing myself. So that's how something in a past life can be an undercurrent under something that had occurred in this life in our past. It doesn't have to be that way. So to understand a blockage can be from anything that we've experienced, anything that we're holding in that is emotional, that is mental, that is a belief, that is something that we were trained into, that that is something from society. So it really can be this whole, um, you know, many different things. Um, a real common one that I find in my healing work is from experiences that people have through relationships, um, not only romantic relationships, but a lot of family relationships, and that these blockages are carried through from parents in siblings into individuals. Um, and part of that is the belief system or something that they were told over their entire Like a life. learned blockage? Mm -hmm. A learned blockage okay. or like a, um, let's say for example, there's somebody that, uh, this is a very common one, somebody that may have uh, an extremely narcissistic parent, say, and that parent um, put down that child or made that child feel responsible for their problems. So as that child grows through life, they start to carry that belief system that they're responsible for everybody else, that they're not good enough. So they start to carry a blockage in their throat chakra and in their solar plexus chakra. And let's say that's added with some, um, we'll put in um, maybe some security, that child didn't feel safe. You know, maybe there was um, this continuous feeling of always coming home and that parent never knew what mood that parent would be in. And so there could be some physical, uh, maybe physical abuse. There could be some emotional abuse or both. So that would then be in the root chakra. So that person could be experiencing physically, they could have uh, stomach problems. Um, they could have digestive problems. They could have... Um, challenges with uh, being able to hold a job, hold friendships. Um, they could feel like they could never make anyone happy. And so they could continuously have confrontation or unable to keep relationships with people. And it's not, it's, and this is the thing, that person would be taking that in personally as there's something wrong with me. Well, where the adversity is, is that they were trained to believe something about themselves, whether it was conscious or unconsciously trained to that person, they were trained to believe something about themselves that is not true and therefore is not aligned with their system, is not aligned with the true being of who they are. And so what happens is that then creates, we'll say like a heavier energy. So the way it looks to me is a chakra that is clear and healthy looks bright and spins or is bright and open and so when I see one that's carrying a blockage from something it's like seeing dust like looks like um you know um on Charlie Brown pig pen yeah right and it's all that shh, it, that's how it yeah looks. it's chaotic looking and so it sometimes it'll be just a little bit in a corner of a chakra and it's like that because maybe there's something that's kind of subconscious and quiet and not out in the front. And then there's some other experiences that 
are very obvious and very out in the front. So um, the other thing is too, is when we're working through blockages, there are some things that are able to be cleared and shifted immediately because they maybe are not as stationary. Maybe they've not, um, it might be something that once we have understanding of it, or once we put attention to it, it's able to be shifted and moved. And just so everybody knows, connecting with a healer, connecting with somebody to help you do this is, is not necessary. You don't have to do that. You can do these things yourself. Part of the benefit of having a healer, having somebody that's knowledgeable with it to connect to is to help guide you through it. And the whole idea about all of this, about mediumship, about healing and all of that is to give you the tools. It's like, it's like everyone passing on to each other to give tools so that you can do this for yourself. So you don't need to go to somebody else. You can collaborate with somebody, compliment with somebody to grow but you don't need to depend on anybody because this is teaching each one of us to be independent and responsible of our own emotions, of our own body, of our own healing and trusting our own intuition above and beyond what has been taught to us on the outside because not everything on the outside is as it really is. And there's many things that are not true. So that's where blockages kind of... Well yeah, that made me think there's got to be like layers of awareness yes. of blockages too, because you tell me about that person. And I think so many people don't realize the, um, I, don't know, I feel like trauma is a really harsh word for that example, but it's real. Yeah. Like they don't realize the traumas and all that that happened as a child. Mm -hmm. And so then they don't understand why they are where they are now. Exactly. So it's like, First, you have to even understand that there you, you've got an issue with your adult life in some area and you yes. have to like identify that. Then you have to identify where it came from, which is like another layer, mm -hmm. like, oh, from, you know, childhood with a parent that was like this or I didn't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And then you have to figure out how to heal from that. So there's like so many yes. layers to a blockage yes. to remove a blockage. Is that correct? Yes. And, and okay. it's not one size fits all. So that's perfectly said because, um, you know, you could have something where someone comes with an issue. Um, so somebody could come to me and say, I don't know why I procrastinate. I don't know why I can't do this or I can't get to this next step. And so um, maybe procrastination is not the best example for that. But it's, again, like you just said, I have to be aware that there's something, there's something holding me back. I might not know what that is and that's okay. That, cause that is a, a step in itself is to be able to identify what is the issue. And that's a big one. And that's a, a something that um, is a big accomplishment for a lot of people. You know, if we can understand that there's something that needs to be worked on and we can accept that, that's a huge amount because when a person is not willing to accept that something is creating a blockage or that we have the responsibility ourselves to identify it. And that if it's something within us, we have to understand that we can't blame somebody else, even if somebody else did something to us, you know, and this is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people and that's okay. But we have to get to a point where we're able to say, all of this may have happened to me, but I have to be responsible of what it's doing within me. I am responsible of identifying what it is and doing the work to be able to relieve it. So it has to be that taking the blame off and not taking the blame ourselves because this is the other thing. Another layer to it is what's going on and what's the blame and shame we've put on ourselves through that. Yeah. So identifying that and then the layers of working through it. And that's often not something that can be done in one session or at one sitting. And is it meant to be? So no, because um, as we go through the healing process, as we're removing a block, keep in mind when we remove something, it's replaced with something else. So as you're pulling out these blockages, as you're pulling out 
and and the word blockage is energy we're pulling out an energetic frequency that has created density within your energy system that has either already started to manifest itself into your physical body or it will eventually but it's doing something to you that that is uh, creating a blockage it's creating a wall for you to be able to progress to the next stage or for you to be able to feel better to have more energy whatever that desire may be and you may not know what that is until you start to remove the blockage but the point is is when that's being removed you're also having more light put in because light is the same frequency as information so as we gather light as we give gather information we're expanding and that's the process of expanded consciousness so your consciousness starts to expand and you're removing you're expanding you're removing you're expanding our energy body will go much quicker and faster and further ahead than our physical body will because of the densities and the differences so part of this is also being patient for the process to not rush ahead and try to create all these results for ourselves that maybe we're not quite ready to take because removing blockages can be very physical and again we're speaking about something generically but each individual person has their own way of doing this so one person um you know i'll use myself as an example if myself and some of the things that i worked on um i had a really big one with self-confidence trust in myself because i had always felt inside that i was you know i knew what i knew for myself and i believed it wholeheartedly but i would not trust giving the information i had or my beliefs to people on the outside of me because I was very used to them either taking that and running with it or criticizing me for it or basically it was like I was protecting sacred information inside of me so I played this game of pretend like I was pretending to not be as knowledgeable or I was pretending to like diminishing myself and it became a habit to the point where I would go along with things that weren't even really me because it was easier to do that than to come out and say, no, I actually, that's not right. And that's not right for me. That's not what I know. And I feel, but I never had the evidence. And this is part of something I know a lot of people feel is that knowing inside and not really knowing where all of that comes from or why do I know that? And so that's a process. So that's a layer. And that's something that came off for me in layers. And now, does that expose itself to me now? Yes, it does. So would I call this a healed thing? Yes, I still consider it healed. Because it no longer no longer um, blocks me from being able to get my things done. It no longer stands in my way for me to get to where I want to be. But does it ever expose itself? Yes. So sometimes it can be something where I can use my own tools to say, okay, I might have to slow something down. I might have to say to somebody, I need a minute to think about this, or I'm going to have to get back to you on this. Or if it's something within a conversation that I'm having, um, sometimes it'll be keeping myself quiet to hear all of what somebody else has to say before I respond. And that has taken practice to work through those things so that no longer am I coming from an inauthentic place because my number one goal is to be authentic to myself but does that mean I have to do it on a specific timeline in a certain way because that could be different at all times so it doesn't come up in the same ways that it used to and it doesn't come up like a painful lesson for me anymore it comes up more like an opportunity and I find that each time I have an opportunity like this there's always some sort of gift that comes out of it. And when I mean that, it's uh, when I work through something with somebody, sometimes it can just be this quick, um, like explaining something like a, um, there could be like a misunderstanding instead of just kind of letting somebody have their own way. 
It could be, um, you know, taking an opportunity to say something to somebody in a loving, kind way that I know that they may not want to hear, but being willing to be able to share it because they are willing to have the conversation with me, if this makes sense. Those are the types of things in my personal life that I always had trouble with. So now I'm able to say it and let go of what their reaction is to it. Because I know that if something has come up, it's coming up because it needs to be said. And I'm doing a disservice to myself and to somebody else by not being honest in that moment. Now, that being said, I also don't go around spitting all kinds of things out all over the place because that doesn't help anybody. But I mean, in situations where it actually comes up to um, for that purpose of, of speaking it. So that the, these are types of things that people may not realize can create blockages. Like these little things in our, our relationships or conversations, but they're like these little things that we feel inside. So when you feel something and you want to know right now, where's, where's the blockage for me? So what do I do? All you have to do is spend a day observing yourself and watch where you retract around people. Where do I hold back? Where do I retract? Where do I keep quiet? And don't judge it. Look at it more as a, uh, I'm, I'm understanding because remember, there's going to be lots of things that we don't say and that we hold back and that we, but you want to investigate why. Like why is, is this behavior stopping me from my greatness? Is this holding me back from doing something that I really want to do? So you want to look at those, those things. And what happens is when you start to investigate, more information reveals itself. And the universe is a beautiful thing. And the way that we mirror with all energy, because we're all connected, is when we start to work on something, we'll notice how life is our teacher. And circumstances will continue to meet us that give us opportunities to work through it. So do we only work through our blockages when we're watching a video like this? Or do we only work on our blockages when we're with a healer or a medium? No. We have the opportunity to do this on our own through our entire experience each and every day. Because the people that are in your life, whether you enjoy them being in your life or not, because I know there's a lot of people that have a very hard time with your immediate family or in relationships and they say I would never choose to be part of this family you know if I had my choice when I come back here on this earth I will never be part of this family and there, there's a lot of people that are in that situation but what I want to say to that is remember that the people that are in your life that create that adversity that create that frustration within you on a spiritual level, are our greatest teachers because they help push us and move us to allow us to see something that we either like or we don't like. And it doesn't mean we have to agree and all of a sudden say, thank you, thank you for being a jerk to me and thank you for being difficult. But on another level, thank you because that difficulty allows me to see something within myself that I have the ability to be able to decide how I want to operate with it, how I want to respond, how I want to work through it. So blockages are, um, they're ongoing. Um, there are many things that we work through that never resurface again. And some things that do, some things resurface as a cycle and they resurface to give us the opportunity to show us how far we've come. It'll pop back up and we say, oh, yeah, I remember this. I thought I'd never see this again. I thought I'd never go through this again. But it's like, well, what tools have I learned since then? How different am I since that happened? How non-afraid am I to deal with this? And what comes in with the work with blockages is also surrender. You know, working with surrender and being able to surrender to a specific outcome allowing a situation to be as it is and allowing it to unfold without being attached to the outcome. Because whatever is coming up in your life that's creating reaction to you is something that is also um, 
you, you've got a belief there that is not in alignment with your truth, with your higher self. So even the fear of death, even the fear of death, and that is something that I say so cautiously in some ways because that is one of the most challenging pieces to getting to this space of, um, I would say, a healthy relationship with the, the transition of physical to non-physical. Because the reason why I pushed away my own abilities was out of fear. That was the real foundation. I was afraid of losing people I loved. I was afraid of never existing again. I was afraid of death. I was afraid of everything about death. And from a small child, I would only allow myself to go so far. But yet I was so intrigued at the same time that I couldn't stay away from it. So it was this consistent push and pull and facing my own mortality and facing death in the face was something that was not comfortable, and was not easy, but it also helped me look at so many things. And when I say death, death is attachment to our way of living to material to um the attachment to uh say uh, a, a label of ourselves right being attached to being seen as a certain thing and that's a big blockage for a lot of people is i'm identified as this person i spent my whole life building myself up as this title as my job as my career as as a mother as a you know, I am an upstanding person in my community. And if anyone found out that I talked to dead people, then they'd think I was off my rocker. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a biggie, right? And it's something that that comes off in layers. And that is okay. That is okay. It's okay that this is not a, uh, this is right and this is wrong or this is good and this is bad, that's not this at all. This is accepting where it is. Just saying, yeah, that's where things are right now. That's where my belief system is. That's why I understand why I'm here, and I'm okay with that. And that in itself, you're going to remove a lot of energy off yourself that you don't need because you can take that weight off your shoulders because no longer do you need to walk around and hang this heaviness over yourself that says I shouldn't feel this way it's wrong to feel this way because it's a process it's all a process and this part of our life and I'll say it again there's only life there's only life there's non-physical there's physical but there's only life so we're experiencing a physical part of life and will we grow well, from what all spirits tell me, yes, we do. We continue to grow past physical life. And so don't spend your time worrying about where you're at right now and where you need to be. And don't do yourself the disservice of comparing to somebody else. Because when you watch somebody else or when you listen to somebody else, you are perceiving from your own consciousness of where you're at. And that may not be exactly accurate because how can you possibly know everything that goes on with another person, no matter how much they tell you? You just can't. And you can't compare yourself to somebody else because we're not, we are not built that way. We don't experience things exactly the same. That's why we came here was to have an individually focused experience because we do have connected energy and the ability past our individual experience and physicality to be able to view expanded consciousness, unity consciousness. So being here gives us this beautiful experience of having the individual, I, I feel separate. I'm having this morning, my coffee, my walk, my view of this, my opinions, my feelings. That's beautiful to have all of that. So rather than say, I don't I'll compare myself to someone on the outside, how about I want to look at what doesn't feel right within me? 
So what is it within me that feels that out of alignment? Not what is it about me that's not like them? What is it within me that doesn't feel right? Because you can only compare yourself to the past versions of yourself, not, not other people. So you want to look at your beliefs, your experiences, and work within it in that way. Because that's where you're going to get the best results. And there is a gift every time you do this. And this is the, the beautiful part about expansion and the joy about working through our own stuff and, and working on our emotional intelligence and our bodies and everything. Because there are gifts that money can't buy. There are gifts that are not monetarily attached in any way, shape, or form. And they're the gifts of satisfaction. They're the gifts of fulfillment, the gifts of peace, the gifts of freedom. What a gift it is if you've ever experienced anxiety, if you've ever lived in daily bouts of anxiety, to be able to walk through a day and just feel the natural up and down flows of a day not as being in it and being pulled around all over the place let's just flow with life because life is not a high vibration euphoric i'm always going to be up here and positive and good life is life it is variations of experiences and emotions and our personal job is to be able to flow with the life that we're creating and the experiences outside of our control to the best of our ability. And it's our flow. So what's comfortable for me? So the way that I live my life, the way that I do my experiences, the way that I choose to manifest and react and everything are my choices. And I know they're my choices and I do them on purpose. And that's the difference between me today and me 10 years ago. And because of that, I create experiences that are universally more aligned with myself. And that's a huge gift because then we start to really see the richness in ourselves as creators. And so blockages are really moving out a lot of things that are not ours. You know, they're coming from other places, but they're there with a purpose. But it allows us to get to know ourselves better. But because we are still experiencing life and we still have things that may come up, we have to also understand that we're still human. So we're still, oh, we're freezing up again. We're freezing up. Can you all still hear me? I hear you. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay good I was like I couldn't see it <laughs> so um so yeah so that's, that's that's pretty much it so that made me think of a few things while you were going I literally felt like you were talking straight to me so I was like mm -hmm. I can't interrupt her like I just want to hear more <laughs> but, but it did make me think of a few things it made me think about like blockages that I've had in my life um and that whole, uh, like, talking, uh, well, first of all, I was the type of person, still kind of am, I'm not going to lie, I just walk that straight path. I don't do any, I don't put a toe in any, like, you know, risky anything. Like, I, my mom was like, I did such a good job raising you guys. And I was like, I was, you got so lucky, because I was the kid that if the teacher left the room, I sat in the desk the entire time, because I didn't want to be caught, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. out of my desk, you know? And so I've just always just, you know, never, never tried to raise any, uh, I don't know what the word would be, Ooh. like just any chaos, any, yeah. anything. Yeah. And to the point, yeah, where I did not speak up for myself. And um, like a few years before my awakening, it's funny, I like woke up one morning and I was like, I think I need to start speaking up. Like, I think I, this is like some, this is a problem in my life. Like I don't speak up for myself mm -hmm. and, um, so random there, this is so random, but there was like this, uh, 
Facebook post about um, like disposable contacts that I, and I wear disposable contacts and everybody on the post was like, that's so bad for the environment. That's so, you know, like wasteful, who would ever do that? Why did they ever, and I don't know why like this, it got so negative about disposable contacts, <laughs> but anyways, and I was like, I think I, this is going to be my, my uh, time. I'm going to, I'm going to practice speaking up for myself because mm-hmm. like what, you know, I'm going to make people mad about disposable contacts. So, um, but it was so hard. I remember my husband was like, why are you spending so long on Facebook? I was like, I'm writing a post and it means a lot to me. Okay. <laughs> and, um, but anyways, I have uh, like allergies and like, I can only wear disposable contacts, like daily, like you throw them away yeah. every day, disposable yeah. contacts. And so I wrote and I just kind of was like, Hey, you never know. Like I have a, um, a condition. I can only wear disposable contacts. It's like, I can't do anything else. So um I don't know how I worded it, but I, I think I was very diplomatic. And I was like, afterwards, I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, I spoke up about disposable contact. Yeah. And, um, but now I like think about that and how painful that was. And I like felt, I remember like feeling like my throat was like getting tight as I was typing. And, um, and like when you're saying that and when you were saying like, and then you can look back at yourself and look how far you've come. And I'm like, oh my gosh, and now look at me. I'm, yes. I have a mentorship Mondays with Michelle about yes. mediumship. And I, you know, could barely write a post about disposable contacts before. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> that's amazing. So. <laughs> that's, an am- that's an amazing story. Seriously. And that's, that's so important too, because um, there is nothing like, you know, you're laughing saying disposable contacts, but it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. When you can it's express almost like yourself, practice, like yes, I just, you know, yes. put a toe out there. Yes. And, <laughs> and then, then it really, it really does help. And I do feel like, you know, I can say now I do feel like my opinion matters and mm-hmm. I want to share it with the world. And, mm-hmm. you know, obviously in a positive way, I didn't like, you know, yeah. I don't, I don't put hate out into the world, but, um, but yeah. So like looking back and, when you talk about even like identifying um, the, the walls, um, the blocks, like you made me think about like, what does it feel like to identify a block? And I think about like, there's some language that we use um, that might help you to identify a block. So I feel like the easiest one is like, you know, you feel like, oh, like I put a wall up between me and this person. Well, that's a block. What is it about that person? You know, and like, yes. so if you're a very visual person, maybe you're like really envisioning a wall or yeah. auditory and you'd always use, I put a wall up between me and this person. Like that yeah. would be a block yeah. or, um, or like I sometimes like, you know, I had the throat chakra thing where I could feel it. Sometimes I like cringe. Um, oh, there were some more that I was thinking of when you were doing, yeah. I was going to write them down, but like there's some words and verbiage that might be able to help you with with blocks and identifying yes. blocks and blocks yes. and other people. Yes. Um, and that's another right there. You yeah. just brought up or like cringing, word. cringing, yes. you know, like, Oh, that makes my ear cringe when that person talks to me or um, different things like that. So I thought that would, you know, be really helpful to know how to identify blocks that way. Or like me, like a, it makes give me knots in my stomach to write my post on. Well, I, I know Eric, Eric had um, one of the, original teachings to me is um eric said (laughs) your biggest your biggest blockage is believing you have a block yes yeah and so and he would always start with that and and say okay so yeah there's something and and yeah you have something to work through that will assist you but if you continue to say i have this block i have this block and so if you're always saying well i don't know like i i can't hear spirit because I have this block that makes me not hear yeah. spirit. So if you're saying that over and over again, what are you expressing to the universe? Yeah. What What are you speaking? So the language that you speak, um, you know, like our language, our emotions, our beliefs. Yeah. A, a belief is something that is repeated over and over and over. So, so if you're repeating that over and over and over, what are you doing? So that made me think about, I had a block. So um, this goes to our story last week. I, um, I remember I was like listening to different podcasts when I was figuring out about spirituality and this one woman 
was being interviewed and she um, wrote a book about talking to angels and she talks to angels. And she said like, she remembers the day that the angels came into her house and uh, like how blown away she was by them. And I was like, man, if only I could be worthy enough to talk to angels, like that would be so cool. So by saying, I wish I was worthy enough means like, I'm not, I believe that I'm not worthy enough. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which goes to the whole belief of like, I'm not a good enough medium to be able to do this, Mm -hmm. which is definitely a block. And, um, and so I had that block. I was like, Oh, they're not coming to my house. Like I'm not good enough yet. Like, Oh, I can only see spirits. There's no way I can see angels. And, um, and so then I started getting all these spirits that needed help getting crossed over. And you said, if you ever need help, just call on Archangel Michael. And so I was like, oh, okay, like, well, he's not going to come because, you know, <laughs> I'm not good enough, but uh, thank you. And so um, I was crossing people over. And then there was that one time where I kind of got a little panicked by the feelings I was feeling when I was crossing them over. And I called on Archangel Michael and like immediately poof, the person got crossed over. And so um, then I was like, oh, that was like really easy. I'm just going to call on Archangel Michael. And then I was like, but I still like that was going on, but I still had this belief that I could not contact angels or talk to angels. And then one day I was like, wait a minute, they come and help me when I cross over spirits. So why wouldn't they be able to talk to me? Like, you know, my belief is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so then that changed my belief. And then that's when I asked Archangel Michael, if I could, ju- if he could just come and I just wanted to feel what he felt like and he came right away. And then, you know, a few weeks later, a month later, whenever that was, then it was Metatron. Mm-hmm. And so once my belief changed, then it started coming through. So yeah, definite. Yeah. Your beliefs can cause your blocks. And- a, lot of, a lot of times those, the belief systems could be like, you may have done um, all kinds of work in like um, you know, working on yourself and you're like, why, why is this not happening? Why is this not happening? And it, it can honestly be the belief system itself that is, that is the tipping point. And when you work with that belief system, then everything starts to shift. Now, I mean, really belief system is everything, but there's often to get to the core of that belief system is when we need to go through layers of understanding it too right so right. it's not always this this hard and fast thing but a lot of times it can be and for you like the the everything else like we've talked about before there's this foundation that you had built on so with all that foundational work it was the understanding and the wait a minute here i i am worthy and i am <laughs> like why wouldn't they come to me why wouldn't they why wouldn't they be here right Oh, we blocked again. We we blocked energy because we have a rainstorm here in Ontario today. It's pausing. A dramatic pause. There you go. You're yeah. back. Just a dramatic pause. Okay. <laughs> just a dramatic pause. It's just it's just the rain. I don't even know if anybody can hear me because I talk through the whole thing. I know it's paused, so I started singing. I can you did just now? No, before. Okay, because I was like, I did not hear any singing, no. but I feel like I heard you talking. Okay. Yeah, I was. I, I think was. I can hear you. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, where were we? Um, yeah, I was. I don't even pausing. know. That was but dramatic pausing. Yeah, it was dramatic <laughs> pausing. So, um, okay. So, let me ask you this. So, um, anything else happened this week though that you'd like to share with the class? I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know anything related to what we're talking about. I just have that one. uh, I have two random stories that are just super random that I don't know. Like, well, okay. I'll tell, I'll tell my first one. Okay. So I I feel like this is a dream interpretation. Uh So one is, um, I was having a dream that I was talking to a fly and it was like buzzing around and landing on different things. It was as it was talking to me. And, um, and I was, I respect, it was telling me like 
things like your spirit guides tell you, like very big concepts. I felt I trusted it. I respected it. It was, you know, like we had a really good relationship. I was very thankful for it to come and like share what it, I don't remember, of course, what it was telling me, but I just remember the feeling of like admiration, respect, whatever. But it was like, fly. it would tell me something that would fly, you know, and land and then fly and then land. And so I'm like feeling trust, admiration, respect. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, does this mean it's pooping every time it lands when it's talking to me? And like, it was like that switch of like emotion of like trust, admiration, everything's great. I'm learning about the world to then like, are you pooping? Like that, you know, that side thought is what made me wake up and remember what was happening. And so then I was like, oh, it's just a dream, whatever. And then I was drinking my coffee and a fl- inside and a fly flew into my coffee and landed on the inside wall of my coffee. Never, ever, ever has that ever happened before, ever, even outside. And I was like, oh my gosh, is it from that dream? And um, so then uh, I Googled flies and they mean like sudden change. So I'm like, huh, I don't know what's going to happen around here. Um, so I don't know. So that was just like really interesting. Like it is interesting. I feel, isn't that really interesting? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it wasn't a dream because I, when I have like these random side thoughts within a dream, that's when I feel like, you know, it's like my subconscious is taking in all the information, raising my vibrations. And all of a sudden my conscious self is like, wait a minute, what's happening? <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, that's really interesting because um, <clears throat> we have such different layers to our experiences when we sleep because we do, and it, it's multi-layered. So we have a tendency because we experience life linear, uh, like our human life, we experience that linear process. So we almost consider our sleep time is linear as well. Like I dreamt and then this happened, then this happened, but it's often been explained to me that it is um, it's as multi-layered as the timelines are. And so there can be different versions of our experience. Sometimes we're experiencing something that say the collective would see. Um, We can be experiencing other like their lifetimes. Um, And of course we're being communicated with, we're being taught. And am I frozen again? I'm frozen. You're picked up there. You're unfrozen now. Um, so we can be experiencing, um, um, sorry, saying like other lifetimes, um, we can be experiencing, uh, communication with our guides, whether that, however that teaching comes in and that was a teaching is what you were getting there. That was definitely teaching and that was very real. And there's a bit of a metaphor to that and it had to do with perception it's interesting that what we were talking about today with with blockages and everything but it's perception and there is change and it's like what it, your perception is is the change that has to do with fear and it was showing um the two polarities so when you look at the the trust the admiration and then shit right because <laughs> the fly was representing something that is often perceived as dirty oh right okay but it's saying that there are things that you may perceive in a way that has always looked this way to you but there is another way of looking at things what you see may not be exactly as it is and so this fly was giving you all this wisdom and you were getting all these sensations and moving about you buzzing around um And when that part came in, you're correct, because that is that conscious understanding. That's that belief that, wait a minute here, you're a fly. And are you shitting on me? Like, am I covered covered in your poop? And there's some Eric to that. There's some some Eric in there. (laughs) there. Anything that comes in with shit is Eric. Because I'll tell you, because Eric... Eric has some very, I've got some very interesting stories with Eric and poop, but anyway, um, so I feel his energy all over that, but, um, that's really interesting 
Um, see if there's anything else I can pick up on that. No, that's about it. But the fact that the fly shows up and goes on the inside of your coffee cup, like, yes, like, what are the chances, yeah. right? No. Yeah, no. that was it. Was unbelievable. It was like I was like. I can't believe it's happening. So yeah. So then it made me like really go, okay, yeah. don't doubt that's, yeah. that's for real. Yeah. Yeah. That is so interesting. I know. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. What time we're at? 12. Oh, okay. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today before we skedaddle along the way? I don't think so. I think that was really good. Um, I don't know if you want me to, like, so when Michelle Some said, I know, well, no, but like when Michelle said, Hey, what, I think we should talk about blocks today. And then I was talking about, okay, that's really odd because I just wrote down this book that I really, mm -hmm. the title sounded really good mm -hmm. and I wanted to read it. So I cannot say that I'm recommending this book. I'm saying that I saw this and I feel like there is a spiritual coincidence in the fact that I saw this and this is our topic, but it looked really good. Someone recommended it on Instagram and it's called, this is how you heal by Brianna Weist, W I E S T. And um, so I don't know, like maybe that would help uh, with, you know, healing mm -hmm. some of the blockages too. So I know I'm going to, yeah. hopefully they have it on audio because that's like the only way Me I've got too. kids if I pick up a book I read the same paragraph over and over again because I get interrupted 20,000 times yes um, so hopefully if it's on audiobook I'm going to get it I do so. I do all my reading on audio uh, listening on audiobook yeah I, I cannot I've not been able to now I fall asleep when I read so uh, uh, despite it just it's hard for me to have the time uninterrupted as well but I get through the first paragraph and I am out like a light. I cannot. If I wait until bedtime, that's the same because it's just so calming and you've yeah. like, you know, centered your mind. Like any time of the I'm day. Any time of the day. <laughs> any time of the day. I'm, my kids laugh because they, my daughter asked me if I'm narcoleptic, right? Because <laughs> she's like, I have never seen anybody. It's my, my oldest daughter. She's like, I've never seen anybody be able to fall asleep as quickly and anywhere that you can. And because I'll like, I'll finish a session and sometimes I'll be like, okay, I just need to have like 10 minutes of like a, a quick, like little meditation or like a, a quick little quiet time. And I'll go back here and I'll sit on my couch and I'll just be like, <laughs> but then I, I managed to like snap right out of it quick and carry on. But if it weren't for those little breaks, but maybe I am narcoleptic, I don't know. No, I don't know. But it's really funny, though. I doubt it, That's but really yeah, funny. I am the I'm the magician of sleep. So, <laughs> so anyway, well, guys and Marin, of course, happy Labor Day, and um, for all those of you whose kids are starting school, like our Ontario kids, good luck to you. Yeah, and, good luck to your kids. Yeah. And um, and then for all of our other kids that have already your kids that are already in school we're headed now into the fall so on comes all of the yummy fall stuff um, i know i'm so excited time of year my favorite yes time. yeah so enjoy the rest of your day today and you guys too, you, you too enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you next time on the same bat time same bat channel bye Bye. And this is where I hit stop recording.